So previously, I talked about briefly about how glutamate to and dehydrate something that helps keep you hydrated um, electronically and like in a lot of this organ and its uses and maybe a little bit how to do it. Today I want to expand about why it would be a useful invention even more and some other additional ways we can make it. The other additional way to make it that I want to say is also maybe just have it as an injection port where we can put in various liquids and so on, which we would have to figure out some way of making it sanitary, but this for, could be for people that have a really hard time sensing the body or just don't feel up to it and really want to quickly get hydrated. But there will be a separate device that just exchanges some of this water and dilutes urine and stuff like that. Dilutes the body. You know, since you dehydrate this a little bit slowly to your body throughout the day. We can also maybe use it in the more advanced cases to administer medicine dosage quite more correctly, making this more of a practical device overall. So just some quick thoughts right there. Well, let's talk about the first use. They have extra energy. If we did this stuff from what I discussed previously to create energy, well, that could be hugely useful because maybe you could use a the power other artificial organs or something in the body right there and then. What's like lowering the demand on the body, your body needs to use less energy. Now, for a lot of people, this may not seem like a problem because, of course, people are being overweight and stuff like that is the main concern. But we can, that's a whole different way to think about. There's sort of some myths around that. But another way, but using less energy could be beneficial in some inflammatory and fever responses. If your body needs to use less energy, it might be able to have less inflammation, which can help with digestive issues. It can help with runaway fevers, which can make you very sick. It also means that the body can put more energy in other things, like in the immune system or taking care of itself. All very, very, very useful things. I don't think I have to go in depth. And actually, a lot of diseases actually is the fever and inflammation that kills you, not the disease rotting away and making parts of your body destroyed. Even though rotting away and making parts of your body destroyed may be due to actual inflammation in itself. Something that I forgot to add is that these sensors um, might help. Also, just in general, but just monitoring your health in a variety of ways. The energy output might tell you about how much types of different types of urine producing. You might be able to tell what types of, continuously what types of minerals are in your body or not in your body, how much waste, how much you hydrate. And this data can be used to figure out about a diet plan, catch illnesses before they get really bad, like cystic fibrosis. And die, maybe even diabetes from the strips. Or you can like tell that a person has certain drinking habits and you can learn how to adjust your life depending on drinking habits so you yourself take better care of yourself and stay more hydrated and just healthier in general. <laughs> Another thing is this could be part of the heart lung machine is it would require pumps and stuff that I previously talked about at length in some other videos that are linked below. So that is a huge theoretical advantage and by combining devices we would save on energy further needed to power the devices because now we're not creating as much energy but now the pumps and everything can you're not there's less loss of energy because some of the loss of energy Instead, it goes to moving some of the more liquid, and you can make stuff bigger and more efficient because pumps work better when they're bigger usually because there's less friction between the moving parts compared to how much volume it's moving. A simple kind of explanation of this would be um, how would I say it? If you have a um, cylinder 
with a uh, cylinder with a piston in it. The cylinder will have a certain the cylinder will have a certain surf the cylinder that's moving in of a certain surface uh, two pi uh, that everything is working against. The axle pump piston area is two pi r squared and that determines about how much stuff in times the cylinder height and speed is moving that determines how much liquid. Let's just look at the surface pair volume. So the volume increases by the square of the cylinder moving back. The square of the radius or the cylinder surface increases by the r. So then we get that it goes linearly up to this less friction compared to how much it's pumping because there's less surface that it's rubbing against compared to the volume of liquid it's moving. Also, electric motors and engines and other engines can be more efficient when bigger and devices are easy to fabricate when they're bigger. So that's all just a huge advantage right there. Another thing that could happen is this could help the kidney and stuff function because it kind of acts like an artificial kidney. And this could help people with that on dialysis and stuff like that. Dialysis is not as friendly as a process as some people make it out to be. No one says it is friendly. I want to repeat that. But every time you do dialysis, you risk inf infection. So if it's inside the body, it continues working, it's less risk of infection. It is also very time consuming, money waste, takes a lot of money, everything. But another fear is that dialysis machines, for a variety of reasons, make proteins and other chemicals more likely to unfold or change structure. And that can lead to something like protein amygdalosis, which is a disease that can cause degeneration of people and kill them. How this dialysis, how it works is not fully understood, but dialysis machines usually have heat changes that can cause proteins to change structure. There's also shock of different pressure changes and different movements and stuff that all disrupt the system. That wouldn't occur less with a small device working inside the body, the same pressure and size, and not working as hard for over a longer period of time. Also, the problem with dialysis is that you not oftentimes all if you have always on the machine you have a part of the machine doing more of the protein unfolding. But if you're not on the machine always, you have more buildup in your bloodstream of the toxins, which might cause protein unfolding. And will lead to ventral sickness. So another huge problem right there. <laughs> the last one is that this might also give you digestive boost if you have digestive issues by recycling certain nutrients uh, or minerals if you have a hard time digesting those minerals. Not only might it help with digesting certain minerals, if your body can better do that digestion, it might have to do less work or feel less inflamed. So, that gives you better benefits and having less inflammation might cause less dizziness, might wear out your immune system less, might cause less pooping and peeing troubles. Oh yeah, and a, well, another benefit of all these devices that I forgot to say is less frequent urination, which can help be very embarrassing in life or just get away from you doing stuff in life. And maybe something back to the monitoring idea that I just thought of is maybe it tells you when you have to go to the bathroom for people with interception issues. You could even have this fully become its own peeing device that pees into a bag or something. If you have trouble holding it in for very long and want to just do stuff before do stuff before going to the bathroom so it acts like an extra bladder. And uh or you can have it so it <clears throat> does some other ways that it just 
cleans it up, maybe by cleaning up um, the urine, so that's urea and other things, those are smelly stuff, some of the smelly stuff, not all the smelly stuff. Maybe it smells less when it comes out then. So if they come they pee in the pants, it's not as big of a deal. <laughs> Which is a, would be a funny side effect. Not funny, a great one. Well, thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. You have to say now. I'm trying to raise a thousand subscribers a year and four thousand watch hours. This is really hard. With your help, I think you can do it. Or if you have any of these for future videos, comments, or suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. Again, thank you very much. Goodbye.